What's the thing that we eat a lot of? And a lot we eat a lot of corn. So that was my first point of um, reference to look up the possibility of what could have caused my problems. Corn was approved for sale in the UK in 1985 and is enjoyed by millions of people. But some consumers have reported a violent reaction after eating it. I was in the bathroom um, with violent um, vomiting and diarrhea um, every 15 minutes for an hour to an hour and a half. That was the first, my first experience with corn. Immediately after eating it, um, I felt unwell, uh, stomach cramps and nausea, um, followed by violent sickness. And just constantly being sick. It was it was like food poisoning. Um, by the time I got to the end of the meal, I just couldn't wait to get to the toilet. And uh, you know, without wanting to be too graphic, I didn't know which way to turn because my body was just throwing it out as fast as it could from both ends. I was so ill, and I just could not stop vomiting that I had to call um, NHS 111, and they took me straight into hospital. Um, and I had to be put on a drip. But it was so, so, so violent. It just went on and on and on. And um, I was literally, in the end, um, almost, I felt almost unconscious. It was like four, five hours of vomiting, and it was awful. And I thought I was going to die. And I was alone, and I had nobody to help me to talk to. I was just, it was scary. I thought I was dying at one point. It was just horrendous. The Center for Science in the Public Interest is a consumer advocacy group based in Washington, D.C. Most of CSPI's work has been focused on nutrition and food safety. And because I started working on food additives back in the early 1970s, I followed food additives ever since and have gotten involved when I learned the problematical ingredient. And corn was one of those ingredients that I had questions about uh, beginning 20 years ago. When you go to the supermarket um, and this very attractively packaged product is there representing something that is not meat but is like it, you can make the same sort of recipes just using that as an alternative. And then we're going to add the corn mince. And corn mince is really low in fat, so it makes it a nice, healthy dish. An interesting ingredient that it could lead to the production of healthy meat substitutes. And eating too much meat is a real problem, health-wise, environmentally. Uh, but So first I thought corn was fine, and then I learned of people having adverse reactions to it. And the more I learned about it, and then we publicized it somewhat, and we began receiving hundreds of reports of adverse reactions, mostly gastrointestinal, diarrhea, vomiting, less frequently asthma, rashes, hives, and it could lead to serious anaphylactic reactions. Well, we ended up receiving well over 2,000 adverse reaction reports. Most of them came in via our website that people can find by looking for CORN and Center for Science in the Public Interest. And that's been a great help in enabling people to register their complaints because, frankly, nobody else has been interested. We've collected so many that we're able to uh, characterize the kind of adverse reactions people are experiencing. And I should say, most consumers of CORN do not have a reaction. They do perfectly well, but some percentage, maybe as many as 5% of people, do experience a problem. And I think corn is the only food ingredient I can think of that the government approved knowing that it could cause adverse reactions. Really unusual. I don't think it should have been approved. We have plenty of other meat substitutes that are available, that are tasty, that are healthy, environmentally sound. But for whatever reasons, the government said, let's go ahead with it. Corn comes in distinctive bright orange packs and is usually found in the chilled meat-free sections of supermarkets. But what exactly is corn? I thought corn would have been made from a mixture of vegetables. I, I assumed it was some sort of soya-based product. 
I can't remember if it's a bacteria or a fungus that grows on um, mushrooms. I believe it's microprotein. Um, I'm not 100% sure what a microprotein is. I had been led to believe that it was something to do with mushrooms, things like mushrooms. It isn't. For many years, at least in the United States, labels of corn and information on the website said that corn is related to mushrooms and truffles. They tried to convey the notion that this you're basically eating a mushroom burger. But in fact, the key ingredient of corn, which they called mycoprotein, is really a soil fungus, a mold that they process in vats and they use centrifuges and other things to make it an ingredient in food. And then they mix it with eggs and wheat and salt and various other food additives. At the time, I was the litigation director for the Center for Science and the Public Interest, known as CSPI, and Mike Jacobson, the executive director, had long been working on corn. He had compiled um, a long uh, repository of people who had complaints after eating the product, uh, all the way from um, stomach aches to severe pain, even in some instances people who had attributed death in their family to the product. A lawsuit was filed by private lawyers on behalf of corn purchasers against the company, alleging that the term mycoprotein, which is how corn is prominently described on its packaging and all of its labels and much of its advertising, the use of that term was deceptive, that it misled consumers into believing that this was a plant-based protein as opposed to vat-grown mold. As I understand it from the scientists, there are people, a significant sector of people, have reactivity to mold. And at that point, um, we were able to force a negotiation whereby we finally agreed to withdraw our objection when for the first time, Horn agreed to carry a warning on the label, which explains that mycoprotein is mold. And it goes on to say there have been rare cases of allergic reactions to products that contain mycoprotein. So again, that part, that second clause is also new instead of attributing it to the high density protein they're now accurately in our estimation and with their agreement attributing it to the presence of mold. But they still don't acknowledge that corn can cause these terrible adverse reactions. This time the um, the stomach spasms and the dizziness and nausea lasted for three days. Um, I knew it was the exact same thing and it was the only other time that I had eaten corn products, so I knew that it was that was the common denominator of my experience. I think people would be interested to know that the Latin name for the um, the mold is Fusarium veninatum, and veninatum means venomous. And unfortunately, that turned out to be a very prescient because this really is venomous. It does cause serious adverse reactions in all too many people. I was feeling quite sick took myself to bed and was violently ill um, literally every 20 minutes for several hours um, and it was the sort of nausea and illness that even when you've been sick I didn't recover, I didn't feel well again. In 2002, American newspaper articles revealed corn's misleading labeling and then the CSPI put their questionnaire about allergic reactions online. We first heard from hundreds of people when there were some newspaper articles and, and people would write us letters. Once we put this notice on the web, we began to get thousands of adverse reaction reports. The morning after I had this severe reaction, I was online looking and that morning I was able to see that one person had died. Um, that's what was super alarming to me and also was able to go see through my search that I could report my symptoms and my reaction online. So I did right away because I thought this is really serious.
if you have expensive litigation because somebody has had a big health problem because of eating something, then surely that means that there is a, a warning light coming on and something has to be done. The public need to be made aware. I found a case of a, a young boy where the, for over a year he'd had loads of time off school and hadn't realised, the mum hadn't made the link of the days that he had this recurring sickness was the days that they'd been eating corn because those two and twos aren't being put together. You know, I'm a teacher um, and we always ask, especially on field trips, but it's known allergies are always stated up front. All teachers know, um, you know, for example, if you have a classroom party that you don't bring things that have nuts, peanut allergy is the biggest one. Um, and as we know, can cause death. Um, that's a terrible thing. It can be avoided by asking, does this product have peanuts in it? Yes. Okay. Then avoid that product. Um, yeah, I, there should be some type of information to the, the person who's eating it, the consumer. Um, they should know what if corn is in a product that they're going to consume. I was in the school canteen and they had vegetarian sausages and I asked them, are these Linda McCartney or are they corn? Because I know that they have both. At the same time, two members of staff answered and one said corn and the other said Linda McCartney. But the lady that said Linda McCartney was the catering manager, so I believed her um, and I ate them. And on the way home from work, I was on the motorway in my car and my stomach was turning and I just knew, I just knew that I'd had corn for lunch. Um, and I literally ran into the house and I, I was stuck in the bathroom for about five, six hours. Um, and I was really, really, really ill. So I was really annoyed that the catering manager at my school was unable to tell me what I was eating. So it appears that not all catering staff are being alerted to any potential allergic reactions to eating corn. We commissioned a telephone survey in the United Kingdom and found 400 people said they had consumed a corn product. And then we said, well, did you experience an adverse reaction? And something like 4.5% of those people said they experienced an adverse reaction. Almost all of them were gastrointestinal. So I wanted to share my information and I reached out to the company itself and sent, uh, sent them a, a statement and a report of what I experienced. But then I also followed up with another organization in Washington, D.C. We published a report on the survey and on the reactions of 1,752 people uh, in 2018. And that's probably the best compilation of information about the health effects of corn. Corn currently state that an adverse reaction occurs only once in 1.85 million servings, a hugely different figure to that found by the CSPI survey. Corn contends that only a minuscule number of people are adversely affected. The makers of corn have contended that our data is simply anecdotal, but I think the way they present their information is very misleading. Um, sometimes they say, well, we've only received this many adverse reaction reports, but obviously very few people f write a letter to the company saying, oh, we had a problem. And then sometimes they say, well, it's only one adverse reaction for every 1.8 million servings. But that's misleading because the people who have adverse reactions may stop eating it after one serving, whereas people who do not have adverse reactions might eat 10, 20, 30 servings of corn. I think at the end, our telephone survey is the only good objective information about what percentage of people experience adverse reactions and that could be as high as 5%. The CSPI obtained information that corn was well aware of adverse reactions as long ago as 1985, but kept a lid on it. About 40 years ago, RHM, an industry consulting firm, did a study for the makers of corn where they fed corn to 200 people and they gave real chicken to another 100 people. And there were four serious adverse reactions among those 200 people. And of those four people, two of them refused to be retested because of the severity of the reactions. That study, which really piqued my interest 40 years ago, is an indication that corn knew that its product could cause serious adverse reactions. and 
the governments, the UK, the US, and other governments that learned of the study also knew that corn could cause adverse reactions, serious adverse reactions, before they approved the product, yet they went ahead and approved it. As far as I know, no other meat substitute causes these kinds of adverse reactions. We obtained the RHM report by filing a Freedom of Information letter with the Food and Drug Administration and received the report. As far as I know, the report was once alluded to in a scientific paper or a review article, but there's very little in the way of information about that study. They're not trying to publicize it. But I contacted Corn themselves um, to say this had been made, it had made me severely ill and what was the prevalence of other people having this reaction? They're very reluctant to tell me any figures and say, apart from saying it's very, very, very rare. Um, and their initial um, response is that, oh, you're uh, obviously upset to high or gluten intolerance or IBS or um, high protein has been the effect. And I'm going, no, because I eat lots of high protein foods and. It isn't any of those things. I know it is allergic reaction to your product. They've also sent me, which I didn't actually um, request, was some actual micro protein here, which I won't get out, so I don't want to touch it. Um, micro protein for allergen testing. So that makes me think that they have the process in place. They must have enough people contact them requesting those. But they must know that there is a, a reasonable proportion now for them to have the process in place to send out samples for allergen testing um, but they won't tell me how many cases they've had um, so I feel they're not being 100% honest that they could acknowledge this a bit better that they could take the lead on this and acknowledge that there is a percentage and it probably is a small percentage of society but we need to know that should we have a bad reaction to it that we are possibly allergic to it and and to avoid it in future that isn't going to massively cut down their market share, but it will show them as being a responsible company. Consumers expect companies to be clear about what their food products contain, about possible adverse reactions, and not to publish misleading advertising. I've seen some corn advertising that is, again, deceptive. A woman is holding a little green plant, a seedling, and some dirt. And the implication is that corn is related to a plant. It's not. It's a, it's a mold. And if corn is related to anything in that ad, it is the soil that the plant is, is in, because that's where uh, the mold comes from, the soil. I think it's just a manufactured thing that people are conned into thinking, like I was, is, an, uh, is a viable meat alternative that is healthy. I can't see that food that is made from a a mould is healthy, it just doesn't seem right to me. And I feel that they try and make out that they're very ethical and green and plant-based when it's not, it's a sort of factory grown, manipulated, highly processed product. Corn is not even a, a nice product to eat, to be fair. It doesn't taste nice. To, to know what's in, in corn, it's even, it's even more damaging. Corn is marketed as being an excellent source of protein, but how nutritious is it? Corn is decently nutritious. It has decent levels of protein and, and other nutrients. It's low in saturated fat. It's a little high in salt, sodium. But it's not uh, some, something uh, really uh, outstanding in the food world. The makers of corn have sometimes said, well, these adverse reactions may be caused by a high content of protein or fiber. It doesn't have all that much protein or fiber. It has less protein than a simple hamburger, and it has about as much dietary fiber or roughage as two pieces of whole wheat bread. Those don't cause these kinds of adverse reactions. It is the mycoprotein, the mold, that is causing the adverse reactions. And there's actually a scientific study that identified the particular protein in corn that causes these adverse reactions. I had an episode later in the middle of the night and had to try and get out of bed with both legs completely fully cramped. 
um, so I could barely walk to the bathroom. Um, and I'm not sure if that was caused directly by the corn itself or possibly dehydration. After these two experiences, there were two others which were when I, I had some unwittingly and uh, that was really very alarming. Uh, I ended up on a drip with one of them. I don't think people understand at all the severe effects that an allergy to corn can cause. I think the average uh, uh, citizen, the average consumer of corn is blissfully unaware of the potential risk in consuming the product. And ignorance is fostered by the labels and the advertising. The labels are very attractive and there's small print somewhere that says may cause occasional rare reactions is the word they use. The company doesn't exactly broadcast that people might experience severe vomiting after they consume a serving of corn. Can you see any allergy warning on this packet of corn? Um, I can't see on the front. But it should really be on the front, but I can't see it there. For the back. Uh, I can't see anything at the moment, nothing stands out, nothing's obvious. There's lots of writing here, hang on. Ah, oh, spotted it, but it's too small. I can't see anything about allergies or allergens at all. Here in the corner under the ingredients, allergy advice. Uh, I wouldn't have seen it without my glasses though. It definitely should be bigger, maybe on the front. A lot clearer, bigger and bolder. Since I've had the experience, I've read the packet and, and there is a, a warning on the packet, but it's very small and unless you know about it, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't think to read it. But at least there's some information on the label about it rare uh, reactions. If you eat a corn product at a restaurant or a sporting event or a school, there's no label whatsoever. You're left in the dark. You don't know what it is. Maybe a food might be labeled a vegetarian stew. So, the big question is, why do consumers see an allergy warning on packs bought in shops, but not when purchased from food outlets? I recently discovered that they are starting to put this in commercial products and restaurants. Um, and that's a scary thing because I know that I'm allergic to it. I have a very violent allergic reaction to this product. But I know I could to avoid it in the store because it's in a package. It has its name on it. It says what it is. Um, the scary thing for me would be that you go to a restaurant and consume the product without knowing it. I'd been to a music festival because I had the vegetarian option not knowing that it had corn in, I only found out later when I became very ill. When I got home, I was almost collapsed on the floor. My husband followed in later, he was driving separately, and he just found me just curled up in agony on the bathroom floor. Um, and I've never been in such agony in my life. So eating out, I will not eat any meat replacement products because I can't be 100% sure it's not corn. I was in a restaurant with two options, two vegetarian options. One was marked as containing corn and the other one wasn't. So I ordered the other product. The waitress came and said, do you have any allergies? And I said, yes, I'm allergic to corn, which is why I'm ordering this dish rather than the other one. Fine, she said. A few minutes later, she came back and said that the chef had said that this dish also contains corn, but it wasn't mentioned at all on the menu. So that is a bit of a, a danger, I think, if it's not listed, particularly if one is listed and the other one isn't, you think, oh, that one must be okay. I think it does need that level of awareness. So particularly the catering industry, people working there know that you know it can have that effect and they're careful about people being aware of it. But currently, many consumers are confused as to the difference between mold and mycoprotein. I am not aware of the difference between mycoprotein and mold. My understanding was that, um, that mycoprotein was made with a type of fungus. I understood it was a type of mushroom. Um, it sounded like something that was grown in a lab, and I understood that. Um, that's, that's all I know about the product. 
Corn is the brand name for foods that contain mold. The mold ingredient is called mycoprotein. It's a name that corn itself gave to its mold. So technically, corn is the product that's made of all these ingredients and the key ingredient that might comprise 50 or 60 percent of that product is the mold. Using this term mycoprotein, which is a sort of generic term which could be anything, um, is not a good idea because it means that anybody who is allergic to corn or finds that corn has been not been good for them will inadvertently, in a hotel or a restaurant, eat this mycoprotein not knowing that it's corn. And so people, hotels and any kind of like Greg sandwich places, anybody does sandwiches, if they use mycoprotein, they need to not say mycoprotein, they need to say corn. They need to use that term because that is what it is sold as and that's what people will recognize it as when they buy a product. If they see mycoprotein, they just think, oh, protein, some sort of alternative, that's all right. And the next thing is if they've got an allergy or a, an intolerance of it, they're feeling ill. And people can build up intolerances over time. That's something I've discovered myself. And sometimes asking whether food contains corn isn't that simple. Well, the average waiter doesn't understand the difference between corn and corn. And when you think of all the foreign-born waiters around, you know, they have no idea. And so if, the, if somebody says, I'm allergic to corn, the waiter thinks, oh, C-O-R-N. But uh, that's not the question. And the consumer might get the wrong answer. Then when you ask, People don't always understand what corn is, and they think you're saying corn, not corn. And you have to explain it's actually the microprotein, but then they don't understand what the microprotein is. And a similar confusion is now happening between mycoprotein and microprotein. I think it should be labeled like other allergens. I mean, as a vegan, I always look at the packaging because we want to see if there's dairy and eggs and things on the packaging. But mycoprotein or corn or whatever should also be in those lists because I don't want that to be sneaking into any of the foods I eat. And I think in the future it might. So, if you're given wrong advice in a food outlet, eat corn and are subsequently ill, what are your legal rights? Here, uh, very few restaurants market products with corn. If they did and somebody suffered an adverse reaction, uh, a restaurant could be sued, but I think the victim would have to have asked the server at the restaurant, does this food item contain corn because I'm allergic to it? So the responsibility would be put on the diner, uh, but if the, the restaurant is serving corn and didn't tell the consumer, then they clearly could be sued. I was staying in a Premier Inn in Scotland when we were ordering full English breakfast. I asked a waiter to make mine without the meat. He kindly offered me vegetarian sausages instead. I asked if they contained corn and after a journey to the kitchen, he returned to tell me that they only contained vegetables. I ordered two of them. About 15 minutes later on my way to work, I started to experience my usual corn symptoms of nausea, sweating, stomach cramps, and the need to visit a toilet as soon as possible. I phoned the Premier Inn to confirm whether the sausages contained corn and was told that they were really sorry, but that they did in fact contain corn. What was so frustrating was that if I'd just been given the correct information, my illness could have been so easily avoided, as I know I have this horrible reaction every time I've eaten corn. I contacted Premier Inns by post, email and website complaint form, but couldn't get any response. So I sued them for giving me incorrect nutritional advice, and they eventually settled out of court with substantial damages. But companies are reluctant to warn customers about corn, because the food standards agencies will not list corn as an allergen. I've met with people from the Food Standards Authority and uh, got nowhere. I filed complaints with some of the um, county 
trading standards authorities and gotten nowhere. Uh, there's just very little interest. And I suppose one major difference between corn and the other allergens like dairy and, and eggs is that those ingredients are in thousands and thousands of foods. And we buy them, we buy bread, we buy milk, but corn is just one company's product, a much smaller footprint in the food supply. And, you know, certainly many more people have gotten allergic reactions to eggs or peanuts than to Q-U-O-R-N because many fewer people have consumed corn products, whereas basically everybody has consumed eggs or wheat at some point in their lives. In the UK, the Food Standards Agency still insists that adverse reactions to corn are not numerous enough for them to consider listing it. Food uh, Standards Authority is very reluctant to include corn into their um, list of, of uh, known intolerances. Um, I think this is irresponsible. I think they should look into it more. There should be more scientifically backed studies. I would like the Food Standards Agency to take much more interest in how it's manufactured, how it's labelled and how it affects some people in the population and think very, very carefully about persuading or insisting that the manufacturing company Corn put labels, warning labels, on their food. On Facebook, which I've looked through, of numerous people saying can't eat corn, have a bad reaction to corn, severely sick. I can't see who's collecting that data and certainly couldn't see that the Food Standard Agency had seemed to have any method of me reporting this. I absolutely think that they should add it to the list of allergens because it is, it's a real issue. I can't understand why the ASA haven't looked into it already when so many people seem to have this allergy. But I think it needs to be flagged as an allergen so people like me who've already discovered that we are allergic to it can actively avoid it. And while we're on the subject of avoiding corn, has Mike ever actually tried it? I've been uh, tempted at times, but I just don't want to take the chance. I don't. And some people experience an adverse reaction, uh, like hives or breathing difficulties, almost at the first bite. And you know, it's just something uh, I don't. I don't care to experiment on myself. When I use a meat substitute, I just buy a different brand. There are plenty of them out there where there's no risk at all. There's other meat alternatives that are based on things like soya and seitan and tofu and, uh, you know, pea protein and things like that. So the range of meat-free alternatives is fantastic these days. I know from my experience I would try and stay away from the fake sausages, the fake burgers, and I would just completely go vegetarian on, on plant-based products. But yeah, there are alternatives. <laughs> so I would say don't try it. <laughs> But if you're still tempted to try eating corn, a cautious approach is recommended. I certainly wouldn't discourage people from trying it, but they do need to be aware that if they, if they try it and they get a reaction, they know that it's the corn and they stop eating it straight away. I would advise them to do a little research about the product that they are going to try. Um, if it's a new product, especially a product like mycoprotein, um, to read the label, take it to heart that um, these allergic reactions that the company itself is talking about are very real. Um, the people that experience those things are very real and sometimes violent reactions um, to their product. So um, don't, uh, don't buy a bag of their product, cook it up and eat all of it in one sitting. Um, perhaps sample it, find out if, if you have some type of reaction like that to avoid having a full scale um, you know, violent episode as a result of just blindly trying this product for the first time. And be observed. Have somebody with you. I felt that my throat started to close up and I was beginning to get a bit panicky and I didn't want to go to the hospital in case I was making a fuss about nothing but I was sat with my husband. We were sat holding hands and I was just concentrating on breathing. If the reaction is more severe than I had and it's longer lasting, they go and seek medical attention quickly. Um, and, and, you know, they can tell the medical 
people that it's possibly the cooling that's caused the problem. And, and with my experience, you know, if I'd have been aware it could cause problems, I'd have stopped after the first time because I'd have realised it was the corn rather than carrying on and having it again and having the same experience again. Don't touch it with a barge pole. I don't think it's real food. So, to eat or not to eat? That is the question. One example of how misleading the manufacturer has been is that they've claimed that corn is as, quote, benign as a potato. It ain't. Potatoes do not cause severe diarrhea or vomiting or hives. I've never had uh, something uh, like a, a reaction to food on set so quickly. Um, I've eaten other foods where it's made me feel uneasy. Um, or, you know, a couple days later, I still felt like, oh, my stomach is a little bit disturbed by what I ate. This was a very violent reaction to um, something my body had never encountered before. And, and obviously had a major problem with. I still kind of, when I pass it in the grocery store, I still have a weird feeling like, oh my gosh, they're still selling this? I can't believe it. Yeah, I walk past that aisle in the, in the uh, supermarkets because just looking at it brings this memory of, and um, yeah, I'm not exaggerating, it's the sickest I've ever felt. And then when I think about it, you know, how it's all pressed into certain shapes and coloured so that it looks a certain way, I just think, it's sort of plastic, it's not real, it's not food. I mean, I like vegetarian stuff that's made of plant food, you know, um, I, I eat that, but, but sort of anything that's sort of micro or, you know, might be microorganisms or mould or anything like that, I avoid, like the blade. I'm just in full avoidance mode now. I mean, I don't even like corn in the house anymore, you know, psychologically, I just can't stand to look at it. I'm quite afraid to go out and I certainly don't want to go through what I went through a few months ago again, um, the sickness bout, but knowing that each time it's got worse, what will the next one bring? The real danger is the question of eating before you know you've got an, uh, an intolerance to this. You know, it's like counterintuitive. You wouldn't eat mould, <laughs> even if it's said to be protein. You just think, no. I, I, I cannot eat that product. It, it's quite scary to know that it's it's there, but it isn't being highlighted to me to be able to avoid it. Just be very careful, very careful. You know, you might have a violent just GI reaction should be somewhere on there. Um, and I don't know, I think that, yeah, more public awareness. This is a great thing that you're doing. 